Today, let's install a Linux distribution designed to be an alternative operating system for Steam Deck called Bazite OS. It can also be installed on a desktop computer for a Steam OS-like experience. On its official GitHub page, it mentions that it has several versions. And as an NVIDIA user, I can use the desktop and GNOME version. But after when I got into the release page for downloading, I got a little bit confused because I thought the different versions would be separated into different ISO files like Pop OS or Nobata Linux. However, for Bazite OS, it only has one single ISO file. And after reading the installation guide, it gets clear that all the versions are already included in this ISO file. All I need to do is to choose the correct version when I boot up the ISO. And the other thing is that on top of the releases page, it mentions that Ventway will not work for this distribution and it is recommended to use Fedora Media Writer to flash the ISO as I'm using Linux Mint Edge as my daily driver on my desktop PC. I use its inbuilt image writer to write this ISO file. Now it's time to boot up the USB. In the grub menu, it has vanilla version, DAC version, GNOME version, DAC GNOME version, NVIDIA, GNOME NVIDIA, and several other versions. I'm going to use the pure NVIDIA version to install. It is giving me a TPM error. Let me try another version. I'm seeing the same error with ASUS NVIDIA version. After searching the internet, I found two pieces of articles that is related to this error. One of them is the troubleshoot guide, which is talking about either installing the Fedora Kinoite or Fedora Silver Blue, and then convert it to the Bazai OS. And the other one is the GitHub open issue. And I see people were solving this by disabling the TPM option in the BIOS or using the grub command line. Because my laptop doesn't have the TPM option in the secure menu, I will try to use the grub command to see if it fixed the issue. It looks like it is trying to go into the live environment. Now the installer boot up. Let's go through the installation process. The installation is straightforward. It began after I set up the keyboard, disk, user accounts, and network. The installation has complete. Let's reboot the system and see what happens. It triggered the secure boot menu because I set the secure boot to auto when I was trying to solve the TPM issue earlier. But let me disable that and boot it again. I just did a check in BIOS. The security boot was disabled, so I'm not sure why the secure boot manual was triggered. Now it's doing some updating on the first time boot up before going into the system. Let's wait for that to finish. After what it feels like a really long time, the update finished and you reboot the system. Now I can see the login screen. After logging in, the welcome program pop up. Let me walk through that and set up the system. The first page contains some accessories and setup that is related to gaming. I'll add solar program because I'm using Logitech keyboard and mouse. The next page contains two NVIDIA related programs. Because I don't want to overclock the NVIDIA GPU in my laptop, I will close one of them. The third page lets the user to choose several applications to install, and each of the categories has a sub-menu to choose individual applications. I'll get bottles here and see if it will work. The UI is quite confusing to use because when I go into the sub-menu and select several applications and click the save button, the category button does not light up. But if I enable the main button on the category page, 
you enable all the applications below. I don't want to disable them one by one. So let's see how they works. It took some time for the application installation to start having output in the console. And by looking at it, it is installing all the applications I selected in the sub-menu. Now the welcome process is done. Let me reboot the system. After the second time reboot, the welcome page still pops up. But now it's time to see if some of the basic functions will work, starting with Bluetooth. I tried the Bluetooth during the first time boot up, but I was not able to turn it on inside the system settings page. Let me try it again. Still, it cannot be turned on inside the system settings. It reminds me of the same issue I was encountered inside the catchy OS. Let me see how I can solve this. Finally, the Bluetooth is working. Ironically, I had to find a command to reinstall the Wi-Fi driver in a Reddit post because the first solution I went for is the same solution I did in CatchyOS, which is to download the Intel driver from the Intel website and put it in the lib firmware folder. But given this system is an immutable system based on Silver Blue, I cannot do that. And then I found this solution on Reddit, which is to reinstall the driver using OS3 command and power off the laptop for 30 minutes. Then it starts to work. What interests me is that this system claims itself as a ready-to-game Steam OS like system for desktop computers. And if I hadn't used Silver Blue before, I wouldn't even know the OS tree command would have worked and tried it in the first place. So this distribution is not in the ready-to-game state yet. But let's move on anyways. Let me see if I can configure another input method using graphic interface only. The Chinese input method is working now. Sadly, there's no way to configure it in a graphical way. First, I need to install the Rhyme package using RPM OS3. After rebooting the system, I had to use ibus-setup in the command line to trigger the iBus configuration manual. But after adding Rhyme as an additional input method, it is working. Now it's time to set up the games. I list all the applications now installed on my system using Flatpak. Surprisingly, Mango Hut and Steam are not installed as Flatpaks, which means if I want to use Mango Hut in bottles, which was installed by the system as a Flatpak, I had to uninstall the Mango Hut from the OS tree and then reinstall it on Flatpak, which still means this is not 100% game ready. It only means it is Steam ready. But anyways, let's start with Steam games and see if everything works without any tinkering inside. Okay, Assassin's Creed Origins has been set up correctly in Steam. Let's see if we can play it with Mango Hut. Alright, the game is working. Mango Hut is working. Let's now run the benchmark. After the benchmark, I can see the Mango Hut overlay gave me 36 0.1% low, 49.21% low, and 70.4 average. Surprisingly, this distribution's Mango Hut is giving the numbers that looks properly correct. But when I open up the CSV file generated by Mango Hut, I saw 23.20.1% low, 41.41% low, and same average number of 70.4. So I will be taking these numbers to compare with other distributions. Now it's time to uninstall Mango Hut as a native application and reinstall it using Flatpak and run RDR2 benchmarks. Well, I can't seem to uninstall the Mango Hut from the OS tree. It kept giving me an error saying that it is not currently requested and I didn't see it installed as a flat pack. But without any tinkering, the Mango Hut seemed to be working on the bottles which is running as a flat pack. So now 
Let's just directly jump into the benchmark. Red Dead Redemption 2 gave me 27.30.1% low, 35.11% low, and 51.3 average. Now let's compare the benchmarks with other distributions. With Assassin's Creed Origins, Farsight OS is the least performance distributions compared to other RPM-based distributions. It has the lowest number of 1% low and relatively low number in 0.1% low, even though it has a mediocre average number. In RDR2, it ranked overall second compared to the others, with the best 0.1% low number. But 1% low and average numbers are trailing behind. Most ironically, with all the gaming improvement features inbuilt in this distribution. It didn't beat the pure Fedora numbers. Then is the ultimate question, would I recommend these distributions for gamers? Probably not. If you have a Steam Deck and want to try a Linux distribution, it is probably for you. But if you want to install it on the desktop PC which has an NVIDIA GPU, you have to solve the issue of the boot up of the ISO file. But even when you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you still need to use command line to solve most of the issues like me. It will be harder for you to solve those issues if you haven't used Silverblue or Kinoite before. Because the regular solutions from Pure Fedora like DNF or RPM Fusion wouldn't work on this system. However, the upside is I didn't encounter as many issues as I did in PicOS last time, so I don't have to spend four days with four different installations to finish whole recording. It only took me around six hours in one day to finish this video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.